Hello friends, this video on excretory products and their elimination part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay. Now reabsorption is not the last step. There is another step called secretion. Now what happens in secretion? The cells of the tubules, that is the cells or the epithelial cells which are present on the walls of these tubules, they also secrete some substances into the filtrate. Now what are those substances? Let us quickly see. So cells of the tubules secrete substances into the filtrate. Now by the time the filtrate actually passes through these tubules, the cells also secrete some substances into these filtrate. So what are these substances? Now these substances can be wastes like ammonia or creatinine. So they can be wastes like this. Maybe these kind of wastes are still present in the blood. So they don't want them to be in the blood. So from blood they put it directly into the filtrate so that along with the filtrate it goes out in the form of urine. These substances can also be ions now when there are excess of any of the ions, whether it is hydrogen ion or sodium ion or potassium ion, so that those excess ions need to be removed. So it, the, those excess ions can also be secreted into the filtrate. Now this maintains ionic and acid base balance of body fluids. As I said, inside the body, all the components should be present in the desired amount. For example, whether it is water or it is ions or it is any other chemical, everything has to be present in the exact right amount, neither more nor less. So that balance is maintained by this process of secretion. Now let us quickly look at the role of the different tubules in the process of secretion. Like how we saw that different tubules participate in the process of reabsorption. Similarly, different tubules also participate in the process of secretion. So again, let us start with the proximal convoluted tubule or the PCT. What does it do? It selectively secretes ions like hydrogen ions, ammonia as well as potassium ions. The Henle's loop, as I mentioned, the descending limb will transport water. That is, water will be sent from the filtrate to the outside. Whereas the ascending limb being permeable to the electrolyte, it helps in active or passive transport of electrolyte. So this limb will help in transport of water and this limb will help in electrolytes transport. Distal convoluted tubule, selective secretion of hydrogen, potassium ions as well as ammonia. And finally the collecting duct which again helps in selective secretion of hydrogen and potassium ions. So you can see that each of these tubules, each part of the renal tubule, they help in the process of reabsorption as well as secretion. And together they perform the entire process of urine formation. So let us quickly have a, a look at the process of reabsorption and secretion all together. So this is how in this picture, this is the glomerulus. So you can see the different parts. This is the glomerulus. Next is the Bowman's capsule here and there onward starts the proximal convoluted tubule. So this portion is the proximal convoluted tubule. The, the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule, they do not play any role in the process of reabsorption and secretion. Because in glomerulus filtration will happen, Bowman's capsule, the filtrate will immediately get into the Bowman's capsule but after that it will get into the PCT where maximum reabsorption will happen. So in PCT you see, if you see this direction shows that all these substances are absorbed from the filtrate and then they are passed on to the blood. So what are the components? Bicarbonate ion, sodium chloride, water, nutrients, potassium ions. So all these things are reabsorbed. But at the same time, some certain things are secreted as well. For example, the hydrogen ions and ammonia, they are secreted. That means all these things are put into the filtrate so that they can be thrown out as waste. Next is the Henle's loop. If you see in Henle's loop, there is not much reabsorption, only maintenance, the maintenance of osmoregulation. That is water is released here and ions are released here. Sodium ions especially, they are released here. Then the third one is the distal convoluted tubule where again some absorption takes place like the absorption of sodium chloride, water and some bicarbonate ion but some secretion also happens like the potassium ions and the hydrogen ions. And finally the collecting duct. In collecting duct what happens? 
the reabsorption of water there is no reabsorption of ions as such only reabsorption of water and some reabsorption of urea also takes place now that is surprising right because you might be wondering that from the beginning i was telling that urea is a nitrogenous waste so it should be thrown out then why is small amount of re urea getting reabsorbed here now this is getting reabsorbed here in order to maintain the balance inside the kidney so just do not think that this this is going to cause harm inside the body this is just uh, brought in so that so as to maintain the balance of the ions or to uh, in order to increase the osmolarity of the region that is if there is more urea the concentration will increase and this is small amount of urea which is reabsorbed just before the urine is passed so this much level of urea is actually desired in the body because it helps to maintain the osmolarity or it helps to increase the concentration of this region so this is how the process of reabsorption and secretion take place so by now you know all the three steps of urine formation that is filtration reabsorption and secretion so i think you have already got a fair idea about how urine is formed Okay, so now there is something which we did not talk about in the last few slides. You remember I told you that once the blood reaches the glomerulus through the afferent arteriole, so the blood gets filtered. So the filtered plasma was the filtrate which we were talking about throughout this loop, right? But what happens to the concentrated blood which went out through the efferent arteriole? What happened to that blood? We did not talk about that at all. So let us see what happens to the blood that went out through the efferent arteriole, right? Now, what does this blood contain? This blood contains the RBCs, which are quite big as well as that is why it makes the blood very concentrated it also contains some big proteins which were not able to move through the uh, filtration slits into the bowman's capsule so the big proteins and the rbcs are present in the blood in the efferent arteriole so where does it go so this efferent arteriole forms a fine network of capillaries around these tubules or around these tubular networks so if you see how it makes a network of capillaries and this network of capillary is known as peritubular capillary why because it surrounds the uh, renal tubule because these parts are the renal tubule and these capillaries surrounds the renal tubule so it is called peritubular capillaries now as I said, now what will these peritubular capillary network do? Now when I was talking about the process of reabsorption, I said that if there are some useful substances present in the filtrate, they are sent back to the blood. Now how do you send them back to the blood? Basically they were reabsorbed by the cells of these tubular vessels, for example the, by the cells of say the PCT, proximal convoluted tubule. But from there, how will you send them to the blood? So from there, it was sent into these peritubular capillaries. So that is how the exchange of the useful substances from the filtrate to the blood takes place. And again, the exchange of waste materials from blood into the filtrate takes place. That is because these blood vessels, that is the capillaries, are located very close to these renal tubular network. So they, the exchange is very easy. Now there is a small vessel of this peritubular network which is called vasa recta and that runs parallel to the Henle's loop. So if you see there is this U-shaped red colored structure which you see here that is the vasa recta. So it is a part of the peritubular capillaries. This entire network is peritubular capillary. Now just focus on the red colored network. So that is the peritubular capillary and out of that this U-shaped structure which runs almost parallel to the Henle's loop is called the vasa recta. So concentrated blood moves down this peritubular network of capillaries. So now as I said the concentrated blood comes out of the glomerulus into the efferent arteriole and then from the efferent arteriole it flows down through this network of capillary somewhat like this now when the blood flows the when the concentrated blood flows through this if there are any other waste material still remaining in this concentrated blood that is sent into the filtrate 
through the uh, epithelial cells of the tubules and if there are any useful materials present in the filtrate that is sent to this blood again through the cells of the tubules. So that is how the exchange takes place between the blood and the filtrate. So I hope the understanding is clear now. Okay, so now we will see, we have always been talking about the urine is very much concentrated. Now how the urine becomes concentrated? As I said, the main role that is played in making the urine concentrated is that of the Henley's loop. Now we will talk more about Henley's loop to understand how the Henley's loop works because no, not much reabsorption happens there. It just maintains the osmoregulation. So how that, uh, how that entire thing is driven, what drives the Henley's loop to constantly maintain the balance of water and the ions. So we will talk about that. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.